massive outpouring of emotion. All set for Galway against Kilkenny, the sequel. It may be game two in the final, but it's game three in the 2012 Championship saga. We've had a lot of interesting comment and debate. Now it's time for the players to make their own statement. The match referee is James McGrath from Westmeath, his first All-Ireland senior final. And he gets the match underway. And uh, it is Kilkenny who won the toss and opting to play from left to right in the first half and getting it straight into the attack. And uh, Richie Hogan has gone in towards the full forward position at the very beginning of this match. Quite a switch there, but that might be just for starters. Yeah, well, it looks like to me, we predicted as Kilkenny have gone back to their, their, their normal formation. The players, six backs playing in their positions. Uh, Killian Buckley has gone to the middle of the field and I see Earl Italian down straight away uh, with an ankle. He was down several times the last day with that same ankle and uh, you know that's worrying straight away just at the very start of the game. Yeah, he had, uh, he had been fouled, I think, by one of the Kilkenny players in the very early stages of the original final three weeks ago and he was uh, in need of treatment on a few occasions. Strongly built fellow, he played on a one man of the match, you might remember. But well, we've got a line ball which is going to be taken for Galway by Johnny Cohen. Just waiting for the uh, medical personnel to make their way off. Sun in the eyes there of uh, Kilkenny centre half back Brian Hogan. There was some holding, and uh, it's going to be a free. Kilkenny now will be anxious to make a right good start here, something which they haven't managed to do really over the uh, previous two championship games with Galway. Yeah, I see David Burke there, the son, wasn't facing the ball. And I see Richie Hogan at full forward jersey. He mentioned he's gone in on Kevin Hines. He's obviously a great finisher, and they're hoping that something will break for him in there and he'll put away a goal. Paul Murphy is the taker here. It's a big, huge one in. First, really, bit of pressure there on James Skell, and it's a little bit worrying coming into this match with a shoulder injury. There was no ligament damage, I'm told, done on Friday, but it is worrying having to come into a final like this, playing with a painkiller and uh, not being able to use your shoulders properly. Well, absolutely. Just difficult ball and he took no chance he just kicked it away he, he wasn't anxious to get maybe involved in a tussle early on Michael Fennelly playing into the goal where he scored uh, a goal last year in the All-Ireland final against Tipperary as it hots up there and uh, one of the things about uh, replays of course is that by their very nature they can be full of tension there are issues, there are individual duels, I suppose, carried over into the second match, and, of course, a different referee presiding over it as well. Yeah, well, no doubt about that. David Collins swung Michael Fenley around, and a little bit of... After Andy Smith is a tough customer, and uh, but not major, and Henry now... And a difficult free. I often think with a free taker, it's nice to get a handy one, uh, maybe at the start. This is out near the sideline on 21. Well, it's that close to the sideline, which means it is still a very good... 40 metres, I would think, from the target. Very acute angle. Henry seeking to put Kilkenny in front right from the outset here. And he's put that one away to the right-hand side, and it's a missed opportunity. But as Michael Dagnall was saying, that was a very difficult free. Yeah, we've all Larkin right half-forward. We've Henry Sheffield at centre-forward again, and there was some talk that Fergal Moore would move, but he has not Tony Ogas on him, and TJ Reid in the other corner, Richie Power corner forward, and Walter Welch in the corner with... The smallest member of the full forward line, Richie Hogan, at full forward, interesting for Kilkenny. Yeah, it's Walter Welsh, corner forward, as uh, Brian Hogan takes it down here. Held once again, and he's won a couple of balls, and he's won a free out. And once again, it's got to be Paul Murphy who will take this. Caught it brilliantly in the air, sun into his eyes. So it's not going to be terribly easy for this opening half for those half-backs and full-backs of Kilkenny. Facing into that wind, into that sunlight. Into Henry Shafflin it comes. Caught well here by Tony O'Gregan under pressure there from Richie Hogan. Got the ball away, very near the far sideline. And that uh, first line ball over there was going to be to Kilkenny following that clearance. And Kilkenny organising their defence here in familiar fashion. So Kieran Joyce there wearing number seven, operating at left half back, going along the traditional lines. And that's 65 metres out from his own end line and a largely still afternoon at Croke Park. Here in Joyce, inside towards Henry Shefflin, trying to get it up onto his stick, having difficulty with that. Out it comes again towards Andy Smith, and Smith sets Galway away, all the way down towards Joe Canning, two players there marking, and one of them is JJ Delaney, not a good clearance out only as far as Niall Burke, picked up here by Cyril Donnellan. Donnellan trying to get a bit of latitude here, back it goes towards Niall Burke, a little block on it, comes to Tommy Welsh, and Tommy Welsh diagonally across field, over towards 
the uh, left half forward TJ Reid wearing number 13. And again, the referee sees a push here, and it's got to be a free for Galway. This time, I think the man doing the pushing was TJ Reid. Yeah, good call again. You have to say, James McGrath, very sharp in the first few minutes, picked up um, that foul there from TJ Reid. And just interesting there, Jerry, a moment ago, looking at Galway. They had only one player within 50 yards of goals. That was Joe Canning. But Paul Murphy had dropped back along with JJ Delaney and they had two on one on him and the ball was played in over his head. If they're going to drag men out the field, they have to play the ball into the advantage of Joe Cannon inside instead of in over his head. Interesting that the Galway team doctor, Dan Murphy, has been out already to attend to Ear Italian as we saw earlier, and Andy Smith as well. Joe Canning's going to take this from his own 65-metre line. Looking for the first score of the match here for Galway. And he positions it perfectly. First score of the game comes in the sixth minute from a free. Joe Canning, the man who puts it over. Well, he got a goal and a point in 90 seconds in the drawn match. That's what happened a little while ago there involving Andy Smith. Late challenge there on him by Richie Hogan. That was the free. Yeah, and a great free from Joe Canning. Went miles over the bar and it was from 100 yards out. Once again, it is the half-back here. Niall Donoghue trying to get it for Galway. And uh, the uh, linesman signals that it's going to be a line ball downfield. From the Davin end side, Johnny Cohen ready to take this. Johnny, who is uh, now teaching in uh, St. Bridget's and Loch Ray, where David Burke is also a colleague. Out it comes here. Running into trouble there, however, Niall Donahue leaving it behind as far as Owen Larkin. And Owen Larkin fouled as he was going through. Chance of an equaliser here coming up for Kilkenny. And it'll be Henry Shefflin, I imagine, who will stand over it in the end. Yeah, Niall Dunho caught in possession, uh, a bit of an experience shot, he really should have turned back, Johnny Cohen was loose behind him and Owen Larkin won it there. Interesting how Henry Shefflin uh, didn't take the first couple of frees in the original match, that was entrusted to Richie Parr, but he's taking over here, and that's one out of two, and the teams are level, Henry Shefflin pulling this one over, it was an easier free, nearly seven minutes are gone, both uh, points coming from frees in this replayed 2012 All-Ireland Hurling Final. 82,000 people present. They were saying the demand for tickets was even greater than the uh, original fixture played at the beginning of September. James Scahill pocking it out. Beautifully caught here under pressure by Cyril Donlan. Gets away from his man. He had quite a duel in the past with Tommy Welsh. Got five points in the Leicester final off him. That's uh, broken down, however. And out it comes once again. That time it was Killian Buckley trying to get it forward one-handed. Back into the middle of the field here. Busy as ever is the Damien Hayes. Went out there for a bit of space, but uh, there's a gap back in there where Hayes might have been. And it enables the cornerback to come away with it. And Jackie Tyrrell makes a good clearance. 60 metres down the field towards Walter Welch. Playing in his debut here in this All-Ireland hurling final. Niall Donoghue gets the clearance, gets it away down the field once again. Once more the sun in the eyes of the backs here. And this time it is uh, Kieran Joyce who got that ball away. Under pressure here, the Galway half-backs that did very well with that. Got it back downfield again towards Cyril Donlan. Standing his ground here, looking for a point from play. But that one just drifts away at the last moment. Yeah, but well, that's a good start by Cyril Donlan and Tommy Walsh are two high balls. You don't see Tommy being beaten too often. And you can see the importance of James Cahill's puck out. He varies them so well. And uh, he, that was a tactic to last. trying to pick out Cyril Donlan coming out to those balls. And you know, he'll take confidence from that as well as will Cyril Donlan, even though that went narrowly wide. Killian Buckley in midfield up there against uh, Irla Tanyan. That's one of the interesting matchups. Here comes Michael Fennelly. Fennelly has been marked today by Andy Smith. Out for that one came Henry Shefflin. There was a push, and the referee signals for a free. Early indications that some of the uh, Galway backs could be in difficulty, especially if Henry starts drifting away out and pulls Tony O'Gregan out of position. Right now, as Henry takes this, Tony Ogre has gone back onto the goal line to assist James Skehel, just in case it drops short. From right in the middle of the field, Henry Shefflin looking for his first or his second point of the match. And uh, Galway go behind here to Kilkenny. Henry Shefflin getting his second pointed free. Well, he'd be much, much happier with the start that they've made here. But they were uh, showing encouraging signs also at the beginning of the original All-Ireland final and then fell away for the last 25 minutes of the first half. And Kilkenny will be concerned to make sure that doesn't happen again. Fergal Moore, huge one all the way down towards David Burke, racing there with Jackie Tyrrell. 
There was a push. The referee says free out. David Burke is incensed. The point has been made in the last uh, couple of days in the build-up to this that the players really now have to forget about the occasion. It's all now about winning a match. Yeah, there's the... You can see David Burke pull jacket hurls, hurl out of his hand, but a lot of frees going against him. It can be frustrating. Yeah, they have to settle down. I, do, I feel there's not as much t tension today, Ger, as there was the last... There was an awful lot of nervousness, particularly in Kilkenny's play, and it, the, both, Kilkenny seemed to be much more relaxed and it's taken Galway a little time to settle in as well. Would you expect that? David Herity's free. Beyond Andy Smith. That was David Collins trying to knock it down, but it's TJ Reid who got there first. Henry Shefflin now in there towards Walter Welch. The big man, he's six foot four inches tall, 15 stone, under 21 this year. Like Eddie Kerr making his debut in an All Ireland final. And Teddy McCarthy, of course, by the way, in 1986. That's back there, and that shot has gone to the left and it's gone wide. And it's a missed opportunity. And it was by Richie Hogan, finding himself in the forwards, no great surprise there. Yeah, great catch by TJ Reid, but great covering again by Ira Latanian. He did so much of it the last day, and you know a lot of pressure on the ball uh, carrier at all times there. And Richie Hogan had plenty of time. He should have put it over in a bad way. I think that's one thing maybe that Galway haven't expected to find Richie Hogan actually playing at full forward. James Skehel, big huge one down. Again, it's taken there by Kieran Joyce in as far as TJ Reid. Very classy hurler. Nicely forward here, and that is Walter Walsh, and that will do his confidence a power of good on his debut, putting Kilkenny two in front, Kilkenny three, Galway one. Well, this is this could work out to be a masterstroke. Uh, Walter Walsh has been put in specifically to keep Johnny Cohen out of the game. He's been Galway's most influential back all summer. He's sweeping up, covering, picking up loose ball, and Walter Walsh is in there, a big man, won a great ball already a minute ago, and now that one over the bar. Johnny Cohen did switch there with uh, Fergal Moore. Moore is across at right corner back where he's picking up uh, Richie Power. Anthony Cunningham facing a replay against a team in black and amber once again. It happened last March for him when he was uh, coaching the uh, football team from Westmead, Gary Castle, against Crossford Glen Rangers through the first day, but uh, suffered a heavy defeat in the replay. That's gone straight here as far as Cyril Donnellan. Now Niall Donoghue, trying to slip the ball outside, it's succeeding as far as 